When you and I commonly think about the routing table, what do we think of? Sure, we think of dynamic routes in the routing table. In this nugget, we're going to look at something totally different, though. We're going to look at static, aggregated, and generated routes. When students are new to the world of routing, they often say, well, wait a minute, why would I ever go in and manually define a route when routing protocols do such a great job of automatically populating this information? It's certainly a valid question. And one of the things that we can immediately point to is, well, we often create a default route manually on the device. So as far as the dynamic routing protocols go, we'll allow them to educate the devices about routes that exist on the devices. But when it comes time for for all of these devices to get out to a default route, a gateway of last resort out to maybe destinations on the internet, will program a static route called the default. Remember, the default route is typically represented as our quad zeros slash zero, and that's the ultimate aggregate route, isn't it? It really summarizes absolutely everything. So manually defined routes that we're gonna add into the table we call static routes. In the Juniper routing world, the route preference, other vendors might call this administrative distance, but the route preference that's going to be default on these static routes is five. Remember, when it comes to route preference, lower is better, so five is a pretty darn good score. One of the things that would beat it would be a zero, and that would be what would be assigned for route preference of a directly connected prefix. Now, of course, we're going to need a hands-on lab nugget regarding static routes, and you'll see in that nugget that we're going to go into the edit routing options area in order to create these. Obviously, we need to specify a destination prefix, then a valid next hop. Keep in mind, if you were to go in and specify an unreachable next hop, or if the next hop were to become unreachable, Juniper's smart. It's going to go ahead and make sure that static route is no longer active. We typically assign an IP address of that valid next hop. Keep in mind though, if you're on a point to point type of circuit, you can just kind of cheat and you can say, look, the outgoing interface will be, let's say gigabit zero slash zero, and that you can use as the next hop. Now there really is an impressive number of options that you can configure with your static routes. For instance, you can engage in what we call bit bucket behavior. You can punish traffic that's heading a certain destination. You can use the discard keyword to do this. What's gonna happen is the packet's gonna be dropped and it will be dropped silently when we use the discard option. You see, if we use the reject option, we're gonna drop the packet, but we'll send an ICMP message that says that destination is unreachable. This does not happen with the discard option. Something else you can do is you can go in and do a qualified next hop. So you could say like your static route entry and then the next hop, then you could do a qualified next hop and you can give it a higher routing preference value. Let's say you give it a 10. We know the default would be a five. So now what you have is what other vendors would call a floating static route. And you have an alternate qualified next hop that can be used in case something happens to the main next hop. Finally, Another very useful keyword that we can do with static routes is no re-advertise. This is often done with like management routes that we're specifying that we don't want advertised into dynamic routing protocols during like redistribution. So you can keep things kind of quiet, keep things kind of private when it comes to management static routes. Now, something else that you can create in the edit routing options area is, of course, an aggregate route. So when you have what we call component or contributing routes, in fact, Juniper loves to use the language contributing route, so let's just standardize on that. When you have these contributing routes that can be summarized into a more general entry, this is always a great idea. We like to create smaller routing tables. We like to reduce the size of convergence domains with aggregation. It's a cool, cool feature. Keep in mind in Juniper, when we create an aggregate route under edit routing options, this route will have a relatively poor routing preference of 130. And what's going to be interesting is you'll see a routing table entry of reject for that particular aggregate itself. Because think about it, we're not truly sending traffic to the aggregate, we're sending traffic to one of the contributing routes that make up that aggregate. So we're going to have this automatic entry in the routing table with the reject 
Don't be surprised when you see it. That's just for the aggregate itself that is advertised to appear. And notice also that Juniper is really, really smart about this aggregate. It realizes that, okay, at least one of the contributing routes needs to be present in order for me to advertise this information. So it's smart about the aggregate that way as well. Finally, in Juniper, we also have what are called generated routes. You see, you'll go in with a route policy and that route policy will define exactly what needs to happen in order for this generated route to appear. <laughs> now, what would we commonly use this for? Well, the route of last resort. That's right, setting a default route, having a default route be generated and advertised automatically. The forwarding next hop is going to be that of the primary contributing route for this generated route. So we have our static routes, our aggregate routes, our generated routes, and we will be demonstrating all of these in the appropriate hands-on lab nugget. So let's wrap things up here with a pop quiz. What is the default next top value for an aggregate? Is it the primary contributing route? Is it discard? Is it reject? Or is it drop? Hmm, the default next hop value for an aggregate. Well, do you remember? It's surprising, but the default next hop value is going to be reject. That's for the aggregate itself in the routing table. So this makes sure that we're sending prefix destinations to the contributing route as opposed to trying to use the aggregate information. Pretty cool. So we got to remember that's a reject. And remember, the reject behavior will send that ICMP unreachable information. So we certainly had a lot to examine in this nugget with our discussion of static, aggregated, and generated routes. I hope you'll join me in our hands-on lab nugget where we'll take a look at the configuration of each of these. I hope this nugget was informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.